Buenos dias a todos, que tal estamos? Welcome back to Coffee Break Spanish. Now, in this lesson, we are still looking at the perfect tense. We'll round up everything on the perfect tense in this lesson, and by the end of it, you should be absolutely comfortable with when to use the perfect tense and how to form it. Indeed, also how to form the irregular past participles of some verbs. I hope you find the lesson useful. So let's go back to that lo he dicho bien. Literally, that means lo, that, he dicho, have I said or I have said bien, well. So have I said that well? Lo he dicho bien. Lo he dicho bien. Okay, so dicho comes from which verb? Decir. Decir, to say. So dicho is an irregular past participle of decir. Lo he dicho bien. How would I say to you, Cara, you've said that correctly? Lo has dicho bien. Exactly. Lo has dicho bien. And if I wanted to say he has said it correctly? Lo ha dicho bien. Lo ha dicho bien. Exactly. The lo each time stays the same because it's, a, it's referring to an impersonal thing. Lo ha dicho bien. He or she has said it correctly. Now, let's change this slightly. If you're checking whether you've said something correctly, you might want to use the verb pronunciar. Pronunciar. Watch that. It's pronunciar. Pronunciar. Okay, and in Latin American Spanish, obviously, that would be pronunciar. Pronunciar. Now, what would that mean? To pronounce. Exactly. Pronunciar or pronunciar means to pronounce. And it's a regular verb. And therefore, the past participle would be... Pronunciado. Pronunciado. That's right. Pronunciado. Pronunciado. So, if we say, I said it correctly, or did I say it correctly, is lo he dicho bien, what would be, did I pronounce it correctly? Lo he... Pronunciado bien? That's it. So let's just practice this. How would you say, did I say it correctly? Lo he dicho bien. Uh -huh. And did I pronounce it correctly? Lo he pronunciado bien. Lo he pronunciado bien. Muy bien. Okay, now, one other thing here that I could suggest is that if you were writing something, then you might want to ask, did I write that correctly or did I spell it correctly, I suppose? So in that situation, which verb would I use? Escribir. Escribir, of course, meaning to write. Now, we learned last week that escribir doesn't become escribido in the past participle. What does it become? Escrito. Escrito, that's right. Escrito. So if escrito is the past participle, how do you say I have written? He escrito. He escrito. Okay, so it's he escrito, has escrito, ha escrito, hemos escrito, habéis escrito, han escrito. Cara, run through that for me. <laughs> he escrito, has escrito, ha escrito, hemos escrito, habéis escrito, han escrito. Yeah, just watch that. Hemos escrito, habéis escrito. Just the, the stress habéis. there. That's it. Okay, so if we're using this word, this escrito from escribir, how would you say, did I write that correctly? Lo he escrito bien. Yeah, muy bien. Now, just one thing here. I said, how would you say, did I write that correctly? And of course, until now, I've been saying, have I written that correctly? Or have I said it correctly? And so on. And notice that it's exactly the same verb in Spanish. It's the same tense in Spanish, even though we change that form in English. I wrote it correctly, or did I write it correctly? Or have I written it correctly? It's all the perfect tense in Spanish in this situation. So, lo he dicho bien. Lo he dicho bien. Lo he pronunciado bien. Lo he pronunciado bien. Or lo he pronunciado bien. Lo he pronunciado bien. Or lo he escrito bien. Lo he escrito bien. Muy bien. Ok. Let's just clear up exactly when we use the perfect tense. So far we've come across these situations. 
First of all, the most obvious one, and the one that's absolutely no doubt whatsoever, is the have done. Okay, so I have done my homework. He hecho mis deberes. He hecho mis deberes. I have visited Spain. Cara, what would that be? He visitado España. He visitado España. Muy bien. I have written a letter. He escrito una carta. Una carta. Una carta. Perfecto. So, I have done something, you have done something, we have done something, he has done something, and so on. That's an absolute, definite, perfect tense. Secondly, when you're talking about the recent past, okay? Now, this is a little more difficult because how do you define recent past? Well, first of all, if you're talking about something that's happened today, it's very likely that you'll use the perfect tense. For example, we've already come across esta mañana. Esta mañana. And what does that mean, Cara? This morning. This morning. So, esta mañana he escrito una carta. This morning I wrote a letter. Uh huh. Now, why is it he escrito? Why is it not escribí in the preterite? Because it's this morning, so it's related to the present. Yeah, it's kind of the present, it's the present perfect thing that we've spoken about before. It's related to the present, it's happened today, it's very recent past. So although in English we would say, I wrote a letter, or indeed, I have written a letter, and these can mean slightly different things in English, in Spanish, if you did it today, then you use the perfect tense. He escrito una carta. He escrito una carta. Okay. Let's take another example. Let's take this week. Esta semana... Hemos aprendido mucho. This week, I learned a lot. No, I learned a lot. Hemos. Oh, sorry, we have learned a lot. We have learned a lot, yeah. So this week, we've learned a lot. Now, that's that's not really quite as obviously related to the present. It's not quite as obviously recent past. However, the key thing there is esta semana. We've said esta semana. So therefore... It must be the perfect tense. After esta semana, the normal tense to use is the perfect tense. Esta semana hemos aprendido mucho. Esta semana hemos aprendido mucho. Okay. Now, there is this other slightly less clear situation, and that's when you don't actually specify what time it is that you're referring to. Let's imagine the situation that you come out of the cinema and you say to the person that you were at the cinema with, did you like the film? Okay. Did you like the film in English doesn't necessarily suggest a particular tense in Spanish because it could be in a variety of contexts. But given that we're talking about the fact that we've just come out of the cinema, it's as recent as you can get. Therefore, which tense do you think we should use in Spanish? The perfect? The perfect, exactly. So let's think about how we would say, did you like the film in Spanish? How would we say, first of all, do you like the film? Te gusta? Te gusta, and the film is la película. La película. Te gusta la película. Okay, so te gusta, the present tense of gustar. Now, remember that gustar is one of those slightly strange verbs because it kind of swaps round a bit. You don't say, uh, do you like the film in Spanish? You actually say, does the film please you? Okay, te gusta, to you, pleases la película, the film. Te gusta la película. Te gusta la película. Now, we're going to put this into the perfect tense. So, te gusta is present. To make that into the perfect, then we need to get the past participle of gustar, which would be... Gustado? Gustado, yeah, because gustado comes from gustar and it's a regular verb. And therefore, in the past participle, it becomes gustado. So, gustado is the past participle that we need. Let's try and work out how we'd say the whole thing. And remember, we're not saying, have you liked the film, but has the film pleased you? So which part of haber will we be using? The third person. Exactly, which is? A. A, muy bien. So, to you. Te. Has pleased. Ha gustado. The film. La película. Muy bien. Te ha gustado la película. 
¿Te ha gustado la película? ¿Te ha gustado la película? ¿Te ha, <laughs> ¿Te ha gustado la película? Yeah, and I did something there that's very, very common in Spain in particular, and that is change the ado to a kind of ao. Ao. Ao, that's right. It's kind of like, it almost becomes in some parts of Spain, ¿Te ha gustado la película? ¿Te ha gustado la película? Yeah. It's not probably the best thing for a learner to do because it might give the impression that you know more than you know and then you'll get a lot of Spanish back. But if you try to just understand that, that the gustao is the same as gustado, okay? And the D sound in there is the, the way it's written and often it's pronounced as gustao. Gustao. So, ¿te ha gustado la película? ¿Te ha gustado la película? And why is it perfect? Because it's just happened. You're just out of the film and you are asking your friend or whoever you went to the cinema with, did you enjoy it? ¿Te ha gustado la película? ¿Te ha gustado la película? How would you say, did you enjoy the book? ¿Te ha gustado el libro? ¿Te ha gustado el libro? Perfecto. Okay, let's change this a little and ask the question, did you like the film that you perhaps saw last month? In that situation, it's not going to be the perfect tense that you're looking for. What would it be? It would be the preterite. Exactly. So now we're thinking of the preterite tense of gustar. Again, it's a regular AR verb. So we're looking for the third person singular, which would be... Gusto. Gusto. Exactly. So, to you please the film. Te gusto la película. Te gusto la película. Yeah, did you like the film? Now, there probably are many people listening who will think, hmm, that could be perfect as well. And the fact is, it probably could be. However, really from a grammatical point of view, because the perfect tense is used for recent things, um, it's a bit of a grey area as to whether that would be perfect or preterite. And the bottom line is, of course, that either way, you will be understood. Let's think of another example of this whole idea of the perfect of recency. This recent perfect tense. Let's imagine someone just said something to you. And I want you to know, what did he say to you? Okay. Now, that person has just said whatever he's just said. Yeah. So it's a recent event. I would then ask you, que to you, te, has he said? Ha dicho. Que te ha dicho? Que te ha dicho? And the difference between that and que te dijo is, of course, that que te dijo is the preterite tense. Therefore, in a sense, it's used for further back in the past. Um, so, you know, what did he say to you in 1993? Que te dijo en 1993. Whereas, que te ha dicho hoy? What did he say to you today? What has he said to you? So, the important point here is that we're just thinking a little bit about how to use the perfect tense in the sense that we're looking at today or recent past. Okay? Is that all clear? Yep. Okay. Remember then that esta mañana, esta tarde, and also esta semana, this week, este mes, this month, este año, even, because you're using este or esta in this situation. These are taking perfect too. And the other situation that we mentioned last week was the idea of hace una semana. What does hace una semana mean? A week ago? A week ago, yes. Yeah. So, hace una semana, a week ago, hemos empezado a estudiar español. We started to learn Spanish. Yeah. Now, notice in English you say, we started to learn Spanish. Whereas in Spanish, you kind of have to say, we have started to learn Spanish. And I think one thing that's quite useful is that if you listen to native Spanish speakers speaking English, you might find that they often use phrases like this that just sound a little strange in English. For example, last week we have started learning Spanish and that, that sounds just a little strange to us. But at the same time, we understand what it means. We're going to cover one more thing in this lesson and that is the use of ya. You remember last week we mentioned ya as in already. Ya he hecho mis deberes. I've already done my homework. And ya plus the perfect is used in that way. Very common. So how would you say, for example, I have already visited Madrid? Ya he visitado Madrid. Ya he visitado Madrid. Okay, now 
we're going to change this slightly because what I want to do is look at the use of ya when we're asking a question. Let's take that example. Ya he visitado Madrid means I have already visited Madrid. But if I put that into a question and ask you, Cara, ya has visitado Madrid? There are, in a sense, two possible translations of that. I could say, have you already visited Madrid in English? But I also could say, have you visited Madrid yet? As in, you're doing a tour of Spain and you're ticking off the towns that you visit. And have you visited Madrid yet? Ya has visitado Madrid. So the ya in the perfect tense, when it's a question, can have the meaning of yet and not just already. Okay, we're going to put your perfect tense to the test in this week's bonus podcast, but for the time being, we'll leave it there. And that's where we're going to leave it today for this edition of Coffee Break Spanish. Thanks for joining us, and we hope it's been useful. You can join the Coffee Break Spanish community on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffeebreakspanish and follow at Learn Spanish on Twitter. Muchas gracias y hasta pronto. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.